Welcome to Programming AWS Lambda with Python. In this section we are going to take a look at creating Python Lambda functions on the AWS Management Console. Then we will create Python Lambda functions using the serverless framework. And finally we will build a serverless web application backend with Python. Let's get started with the first video, creating a Python Lambda function. In this video we are going to use the AWS Management Console to create Python Lambda functions using function blueprints. We will deploy Python functions from the blueprints and then test them. I am signed into the AWS Management Console and I have already navigated to the AWS Lambda dashboard. Here you can see a list with all the Lambda functions that we have already created throughout our video tutorial. Most of them in Node.js and also some in Java 8. Let's create our first Lambda function using Python. Here we can select the Lambda function from one of the available blueprints. Let's start with a simple blank function blueprint. We don't select the trigger and just click next. We need to give our function a name. Let's call it PyFarm. Select the runtime. Now you can see that the code here has changed. It's now Python code. We have a very simple Lambda function handler, which takes two arguments, an event that we invoke our Lambda function with, and the context that gives us runtime information on our Lambda function. Let's add another statement that logs out the event that we invoke our Lambda function with, and instead of saying hello from Lambda, we say classic hello world. Let's scroll down a little bit further. And one configuration that we need to make is um, configure an IAM role that we want to assign to our Lambda function. I just use the basic execution role. Scroll down further and click on Next. Review the configurations and click on Create Function. Okay, we have successfully created our function. Let's test it with one of the test events. Click on Actions, Configure Test Event. And here we can select one of the test events can specify whichever event we like, it doesn't really matter, it just prints it out on the console. Scroll down and click Save and Test. And this will execute or invoke our Lambda function, returning Hello World. And we can take a look at this excerpt from the log output. And here it says key 3 is, this is going to be printed out. Okay, we are back on the Lambda dashboard and let's create a more interesting Lambda function from one of the other blueprints. We can select the blueprints by runtime. How about the S3 get object Python blueprint? As you can see here, the S3 trigger has already been pre-selected um, using this blueprint. And I have selected the bucket um, on which I want to, um, as you can see, a trigger has already been, as you can see, a trigger has already been pre-selected. It's um, Amazon S3 that triggers our Lambda function. And we are going to listen for events in the bucket that is specified here for events type um, that we can select here, for example, object removed, but I want to listen for object created events. So you can select whichever bucket you want. You just need to make sure that there doesn't already exist um, a trigger that uh, triggers Lambda functions um, on these object created events. So if you're not sure, just create a new bucket and select that new empty bucket here. You could also uh, restrict for listening only for certain events. Uh, for objects that start with a certain prefix or that end with a certain suffix, but let's leave that empty. What we need to do is click this Enable uh, Trigger checkbox here, so that gives Amazon S3 permission to invoke our Lambda function. Click Next. And now we need to give our Lambda function a name. And let's take a look at the code that has been generated for us using this blueprint. As you can see here, we import a couple of libraries and one of them is the Bodo library. 
which um, you don't need to bundle with your source code because it's already installed on the instance that executes this Lambda function. So you don't need to um, download and install this Bodo dependency. You can just use it by importing it like this. Here we create an S3 client using the Bodo client library. So Bodo is a library to call Amazon Web Services. And here we want to call S3 from within our Lambda function. This means our Lambda function is not only triggered by an S3 event, we also want to call the S3 API from within our Lambda function. When our Lambda function um, is invoked via an S3 object created event, uh, we are going to do two things. We are going to read out the bucket in which the object has been created. Uh, there could be multiple buckets that trigger the same Lambda function. So here we retrieve the bucket name. And here we retrieve the key name of the object that has been created. Then what we are going to do is we use the Bodo S3 client to perform a get object request on S3. And we retrieve some more information about our object, such as here the content type. And then we print out the content type. What we could do um, here is we could possibly also retrieve the um, object content to process it, for example, to create a thumbnail out of a bigger picture or to transform um, a document, uh, a Microsoft Word document into a PDF or something like that. So if there's no error, then the content type will be printed out here. Let's scroll down further. Here we need to create a new IAM role because, as I said, you don't only need permission or um, not only S3 needs permission to invoke the Lambda function, the Lambda function also needs permission to uh, retrieve information, to retrieve, to perform this get object request up here on S3. So give that role a name and here already a policy template has been selected, an object read only permission because we want to read the content type. Let's call it Python 3 row. Scroll down and click next. Review the configuration and click on create function. Okay, our function has been created. Let's test it with a synthetic event. Click on actions, configure test event. And here instead of the hello world event, let's use an S3 event. So this S3 put event should do the trick because it's an object created event. Click save and test. And here we get an error, an access denied error actually. And why is that? Because actually we only gave our uh, Lambda function permission to And here actually what we get is um, an error because our um, get object operation does not have um, permission to um, use the um, S3 Bodo client to um, get, uh, perform that get object request. Um, instead of tweaking the um, synthetic event, we can also go to our S3 bucket and just um, invoke the uh, trigger. Here I am on my S3 bucket and I'm going to upload All right, I have uploaded the file. I have just uploaded the file into my S3 bucket. Let's take a look. I'm back on my Lambda dashboard. Let's click on monitoring. And view logs in CloudWatch. Here we can see a log stream. And here uh, we have we can see the um, get object operation that has failed because of an access denied. 
But here we can see that manually um, invoking the S3 object created event has actually worked. And we can see content type is an image um, of this format. 